Well, welcome in to week 11, the week 11 edition of the Borderland Blitz, sponsored by Southwest <laughs> University. <laughs> I'm Adrian Ochoa, Rachel Phillips, Sam Harrow-Simowitz. We are coming down the home stretch of our season as today, the final week of regular season here in Texas, because we're talking playoffs next week. This Where retire, yeah. has the season gone just, is my big concern. It just flies yeah. by. Mm -hmm. Wow. District titles on the line, playoff spots on the line, anything you can imagine, we have it for you. Golden today. football's up for grabs. Golden football's, exactly. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting lineup. Our game of the week is a showdown in District 15A, Division 1, between the Bel Air Highlanders and the Valle Conquistadores. A district championship on the line in this one. And then over at the sack, it was pretty simple for the America's Trailblazers. Beat Socorro and they clinched the final playoff spot in District 1. 6A. And it's already playoff time in the land of enchantment. Las Cruces, Mayfield, and Gadsden were all looking to take that next step towards that coveted state title. Well, we'll start with our game of the week. As I mentioned, District 15A, Division 1. It's been very fun to watch this season. The Levaya Conquistadores have been dominant, undefeated in district play. The Ballard Highlanders hit a bit of a rough patch, losing to Isleta three weeks ago, but since then, they've won two straight. District title on the line in this one as a win for Ballard they get a share of that championship. But the Conquistadores, they don't want to have to share anything. They want it all for themselves. Beat Bel Air, and they're the outright district champs. Pretty simple for them. First quarter, Del Valle's Jake Fetty hands off to Juan Archuleta. That made it 7 to nothing. Del Valle. But the Highlanders going to answer right back. Bel Air's Noah Moreno going to pass it right here to Mark McKibby. Makes the catch, and he's got another green turf in front of him. Gets the house call. Game tied at 7. Good, good back and forth here in the first half. As you see, Fetty going to hand off to Archuleta again, and it's the same result. Punch it, count it. Made it 14 to 7, Del Valle on top. The Ballers again, Noah Moreno. Same deal here. Pass to McKibby again. And the same result. Going to make some moves and uh, down the sideline and get the house call. Second touchdown of the night. Made it 14 all. But again, Fetty. This time he's not going to hand it off to Archuleta, you know, because he's got the moves to make it on the ground himself. He'll get the keeper Back and so punch good. it on in. Made it 21 to 14, Del Valle. But you know, Fetty can pass it as well. Now this time he's going to go to the air. The big pass to Jonathan Estrada, wide open. Made it 28 to 17, Del Valle. We're going to go to the third quarter here. Del Valle. Oh, some flips, yeah, wow. Some nice moves by the Del Valle cheerleaders there. Del Valle going to find the end zone once again. Fetty to Diaz. A 57-yard bomb for the touchdown. Yeah, the defender too late on that. He's already in. Nice Dubai. moves from the cheerleaders. Nice moves from Fetty and the crew, too. And here we go. Some nice moves by Ezra Rocha. Just in case he needed some more insurance, you're in good hands with Rocha. As you see right there, the La Valle Conquistadores are your district champs. The Golden Football in their possession. They're the outright champions. They don't have to share with anybody. La Valle wins it 42-17. to They will host. Amarillo Tascosa in the by district round next week. But first, let's go ahead and hear from those victorious conquistadores, the district champs. Juan Archuleta and Israel Rocha went in there and ran the ball really well up front. We did a really good job blocking, and Jake Fetty was Jake Fetty today. You know, he had some big plays for us, and our receivers did a good job. So uh, special teams was also big. We had to be clean tonight, special teams, all three phases of the game, and we were. And I'm real proud of our guys, real uh, big team effort tonight. Just us being able to come together as a team and just have a good team win all week. I think we're playing Tuscosa, and we've been watching a bit on them, so we should be ready. Yeah, they're already preparing for Tuscosa. And they yeah, sound ready. Getting, that's Probably a good thing, because for the last two years, Elvira have got knocked out in this first round of the playoffs, so this yeah. one, a crucial one for them to try and uh, get the wooden spoon out of there and, and get onto the winning board in the playoffs. Coming in with some momentum, no doubt. Well, there was another game of importance in this district. Isleta taking on Hanks, the winner of this game, clinched, clinches the last playoff spot. ABC 7's Paul Sikala was out at that game earlier tonight. He has the highlights. What's going on, Paul? Hey, what's going down, Adrian? Thanks, Lun. As you mentioned, Hanks High School hosted Isleta tonight in a matchup for playoff positioning. Pretty simple. If Coach Scott Felice and the Knights could walk away with a victory at home, they'd punch their ticket to the postseason. A loss and adios, bye-bye, ciao for now. The same goes for Isleta High School. Coach Joe Martinez and the boys from the Lower Valley, they were hoping to climb to 500 on the season and a win, and they're in, or shall I say in there, like... Well, like the 2019 team from Isleta, that's the last time the Isleta Indians had a winning season, but Hanks would have something to say about that. Quarterback Marcus Porras is about to find Andrew Castillo and check it out. Then literally they were smacking helmets as Dominic Boruna lays the hit for Isleta, but after that, 
Michael Oliver takes the direct snap and easy peasy for Sheezy. Hanks leads seven zip, but back comes Isleta. How about Evan Martinez hitting DeAndre Jackson? And Jackson is no Nestle quick, but he is Speedy Gonzalez. Andale, 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 andale. That's a touchdown, Isleta, but they would miss the extra point in the end. Doesn't matter. Hanks pulls away for the 35-19 win. They are headed to the playoffs and will hit the road to take on Abilene High next Thursday in the by district round. Heading to the Far East, we go as Horizon will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Parkland High School. The Scorpions move it up a little bit if you can. They were hoping to avoid ending a season on a nine-game losing streak. And as you can see, he is gone. He being the Matadores running back, the running back being Caleb Martinez, taking the rock all the way. Oh, yeah, that's a touchdown. And Parkland cheerleaders, they were loving it. A bit later, how about Eric Ortiz tossing it up to Fabian Cervantes and the Matadores just killing it tonight. Parkland with a dominant 44 to 13 victory. So as mentioned, Parkland has punched his ticket to the postseason. Rach. Yeah, massive win there for Parkland to get into the postseason. Also massive for the Hanks Knights. It's first year, Scott Belize being at the helm of that exactly. program, putting them back into the playoffs. Massive achievement for him. Paul, thank you so much as always for joining us here thank on you. the Borderland Blitz. We're turning to District 16A. It was all on the line for the Americas Trailblazers that win against Sakura tonight, and the Blazers would clinch the final playoff spot. Americas. Alexander Ortiz in under center with a toss to run for a 30 yard touchdown and first points on the board go America's way. But, uh, you know, Socorro, they want to get their first win of the season. They're going to try and toss it up here to try and get into the winning against America. Socorro trying to thrash up passes to Adrian Acosta. But, uh, yeah, nothing going there. America's defense just too big, too strong. Cora band, though, still hanging with things. You know, you got to keep the team supported. Then still no Mark Moore in at QB, but no worries. Alexander Ortiz passes to Matthew Lugo for an America's touchdown. And look, America's just big win for this one. 45 to 17 to uh, securely clinch that playoff spot in at number four. The America's Trailblazers are in success. And staying with District 16A, Eastwood Troopers won that district championship last week. Before they head to the playoffs, they still had one more day to take care of business. East Lake Falcons, and it's on the board. That's a pass from Evan Minjares to Evan Macias for the little Evan to Evan connection. Now, Falcons loaded it up. Luke Lamelli with the pass over to Paul Herrera for a nice long first down. Couple plays later, it's Lamelli hitting Herrera for a touchdown. So they got that connection going and the band for Eastwood trying to get their guys pumped up on the side in just a second as the troopers still looking to get back into business and let's just say Minjares and those troopers kept it going with a big old win over Eastlake 56-22. Stay perfect. Adrian, lots of good news for me to tell you right here. 8 no in district and head into the playoffs with some big time momentum there. And uh, better news for the troopers, they're going to get to host a playoff game next week as is Pebble Hills as they're the, the number two seed in that, that district. So Eastwood Pebble Hills getting the host, while uh, Americas and Montwood will have to hit the road. Yeah, Eastwood week. having that home field advantage. When you're over at Trooper Stadium, the student section getting loud, and it's tough to go into for any opponent. And then for Pebble Hills, where they've got the same opponent as last year yeah. over at the SAC, Odessa Permian, again, heading out to the, the SAC for Pebble Hills. So that'll be an interesting one. Massive to get the win last Always. year over them. Can they do it again two years yeah. in a row? Always fun when the mojo come to town here. So that's going to be a fun one to watch next week. Again, we'll recap this for you on our recaps as to who the playoffs, who they're going to be playing in the by district round. But let's go ahead and turn our attention now to the land of enchantment where the playoffs are now underway. We'll start in Class 6A. The Las Cruces Bulldogs getting a first round matchup at home, taking on the Tigers of Los Lunas. The winner of this game moves on to the quarterfinals to take on Centennial. Centennial waiting in the wings there. So to the field of dreams we go. Again, playoff action here in Las Cruces. Gunnar Guardiola with the 10 yard pass right here to Francisco Winnikoff for the touchdown. He's got touchdowns, he's got maybe the coolest name out there. Winnikov. Francisco Winnikov. Mr. Winnikov calling you up for a touchdown. Made it 7-0 Las Cruces. And as we watch, uh, count it up right here for Jero to see. Seven push-ups for them. Then Daniel Amato, the gift to him, and he'll just sneak right on in. That made it 14 to nothing Las Cruces. And it was all Bulldogs from here as Las Cruces wins it 42-6. to So as I mentioned, they'll see their f a familiar rival 
next week in the quarterfinals, that being their uh, the Crosstown rival, their Centennial Hawks. What kind of bad for the ROTC to ha imagine how many push-ups they do. Oh yeah, I, I imagine you can I've count. Seen but I a push -up I pr I'm pretty sure they can. Maybe half a push-up. Maybe push up before. Yeah, kind of. I've seen Sam do a lot of push-ups. <laughs> Thank you. That's extra. Really surprisingly, nice. he can he can push up. The surprisingly didn't feel as nice. <laughs> I'm not. I'm all for a push-up competition. I don't you know. guys can go. I'll, I'll happily count you guys. But uh, hey, for now, let's turn to Class 5A. It was a battle between former district rivals, the Gadsden Panthers, hosting the Mayfield Trojans in a first-round matchup. A nail-biter at Gadsden. The score was 12 to 7 at the half. The Panthers. Are up. Gadsden put up a great defensive effort at the end and Alex Lopez right there with the QB sack and uh, look his number would be called again to make moves he would uh, try and get in here so the QB sneak attempt from Mayfield but yeah Lopez again getting in there for another tackle another big stop so Gadsden still up 12 to 7 they're feeling it but uh, guys Oh, Gadsden, a heartbreaker here for them. 12 to 7, Gadsden, but check this out. Mayfield, Luke Lennon fakes the hand up and throws a bomb to Coyle Jr. Oh. for the touchdown. That could be a cooler name right there. Mayfield up 13 to 12, and Gadsden not able to answer. So for the second straight week, the Panthers shut out in the second half. They fall 13 to 12 and are knocked out of the playoffs in New Mexico, but still an incredibly successful season for the Panthers. The Mayfield Trojans now prepare for number one seed Roswell next week. Let's hear from those Trojans. No, no just unbelievable. Gaston is a hell of a program. Good Palacio has as a heck of a team, man. Uh, but you know what? We, we like what we have too. You know, our seniors kind of sucked it up today and, and they did a job. It could have gone either way. I think it was just one hell of a football game, to be honest with you. We're just going to get back to work on Monday and, and we're going to do our best. I guarantee you. We look forward to playing the number one team in the state. I, I mean, that's, that's what the playoffs are. So uh, we get to play another week and we're excited as heck. Yeah, fireworks going off in the background, so there should be congratulations to Coach Bradley in his first year at the helm of the Trojans, taking them to the playoffs. He, of course, was the offensive coordinator for many years underneath his brother, Michael, and now right. taking over the reins and, and keeping the winning in the program. Tough game ahead for them, as we mentioned, because uh, Boswell, number one seed, but playoffs, anything can happen. Yeah, anything can happen, and just again, kudos to Gazden. Absolutely. Just a tremendous season that they had, uh, definitely on the right track. They're going to bounce back next season for sure, definitely. Well, let's go ahead and... Uh, we're going to have plenty more to come after the break. We're going to check in at District 1-4-A Division 1, where another district championship was on the line between the Riverside Rangers and the Bowie Bears. We'll also check in with Chapin and Andrews. That game was for seeding purposes in the playoffs. We'll also, of course, have the War of the Week coming up right after the break. truck driver. I've been driving for Arrivas Enterprises for six. I have a million miles. I'm home every weekend. The benefits and the respect that you get in this company is outstanding. If you're looking for a place to call home, call Arrivas Enterprises. Let's grab some time at Peter Piper Pizza for some big wins. Some birthday wishes. And some delicious scratch made pizza. Here, we help make moments that are made to be shared. Like the return of our extreme pepperoni pizza. Large made from scratch and loaded with the tastiest sliced and diced pepperonis, just $14.99. Peter Piper Pizza. Pizza made fresh. Families made happy. I'm a 25-year truck driver. I've been driving for Arrivas Enterprises for six. I have a million miles. I'm home every weekend. The benefits and the respect that you get in this company is outstanding. If you're looking for a place to call home, call Rivas Enterprises. They're a tiger Go to the front line. and a knight. Meet two El Paso women proving that coaching high school Atta football boy, isn't just for men. It's so rewarding. It does take work. There's still barriers to break. ABC 7's Rachel Phillips sits down with both coaches to learn about their unique approaches to the gridiron and how they're having an impact on their players. It brings something that the athletes need. Well, she brings a lot of energy. She helps us. After Monday Night Football, watch her special report, Blitzing the Barriers, Monday at 10, only on ABC 7.
Yeah, that's the, the Hanks Marching Band. Want to congratulate them because they too qualified for state. They're headed to the state marching band competition next week, uh, joining Coronado and Pebble Hills, who had their uh, state competition last week, but they're in Class 5A. So, Hanks, congratulations for the Hanks Knights Marching Band. Congrats. Yeah, so cool to see that from them. Turning to District 1, 4A Division 1 now, the Bowie Bears hosting the Riverside Rangers. Both teams already knew they were going to the playoffs, but only one would become the district champions. A win for the Rangers secures it outright. A win for Bowie potentially sets up a three-way share of the title. So who would get the gold football, guys? Let's take you out to Bowie, where the Bears were ah. hanging. And nothing quite says we mean business like flashing lights for eyes. Or, I don't know, maybe these red devilish eyes say more. Opening drive, Abraham Carrasco picked off by Sebastian Archibecki mm. and Riverside. Derek Vasquez says thank you very much. We'll take it into the end zone for the first score of the game. But Carrasco instantly shrugs off the INT and goes yards, 70 yards, in fact, to Antonio Ontiveres, who slips out of the ankle tackle. Watch it. Stays on his feet long enough to dive in for the score and hang there wow. for a quick second like, uh, yeah, I just did that. The hey. Rangers say, oh, you want to play long ball? Sure, let's go. Vasquez, it's Archer Becky for 74 yards. He skips out of his own ankle tackle and grabs the score for the Rangers. And the Ranger, Rowdy Vic, is calling his lad number one. But the Bears had something to say about that. Alan Mota burst into title up at 14, and that was just the first five drives of the game, guys. In the first quarter alone, there were seven touchdowns, three lead changes, and two turnovers. The scoreboard was having a fit because there was just too oh, much scoring going on. That was wrong. And Blitzy, well, guys, he was just dang pooped for all that, that was happening. He, he didn't know what to think. But the Rangers, well, they weren't pooped at all. They'd go on to get a massive 66-42 to 42 win to grab the 4A district title and clinch the one seed, their third straight district title for the Riverside Rangers Congrats. and head coach Gary Ricotta. Congratulations to the Rangers. What a show. 100 points in that game. Headed over Austin Panthers, who's also headed to the playoffs. They wrapped up the regular season on the road at Urban tonight. Now this is fourth down. Pass ball is incomplete with the Panthers up 14-0 late in the second. But the Rockets were trying to, why is the camera so shaky? Well, I got pushed out of the way by an official, but look at that grab. Watch your line, Sam. I know. I was about to get a flag on the play. And then Urban would keep the nice catches. Look at the toe tap. And he's letting me know there on the sideline. And then Angel Rodriguez takes the direct snap. And he's going to get it right over the pylon, right across the line. And that gets the Rockets on the board. But the Panthers still take this one 23-13. to 13. Yeah, those refs don't play around. You're in their way. They're going to push you out of the way. I've, I've gotten pushed a couple it's of times. It's okay. I got, the, I got the fun part. I got the catch at the end. So it is what it is. <laughs> Guys, I haven't got pushed. What does that mean? Yeah, she knows, yeah. Job, she knows the rules. Yeah, we know. And speaking of rules, uh, the rules of the War of the Week here. Uh, Montwood, once again, making their appearance on the War of the Week. Uh, they're the defending champs, you could say, 3-0 on the War of the Week. Could they make it 4-0? Let's check it out. They took on Coronado this week. Welcome back to another War of the Week. We have an interesting one for you today. We have a West Side School versus an East Side School. Yeah, there you go. He's yeah, already getting go. started already. And we're about to battle in a tug of war challenge. And there can be only one winner. And the winner's going to get a $50 gift card thanks to Southwest University. But before we get started, let's start over here with Montwood. Montwood, do you have anything you'd like to say? It's Montwood Senior Night, so these two birds are going down. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and check in Coronado. Coronado, do you have any last words you'd like to say? You're about to be thunderstruck. Woo! All right. Okay, go ahead and take your marks. Okay, take your marks. Are you ready? One, two, three. There Can it is. I please be a part of the Montwood cheer team? That is $200 they have won this season. They are the most dominant program, I think, in the county at this point with their undefeated season on War of the Week. I want to put yeah. them at the state tournament against other cheerleaders from around the state. You know, War of the Week, I don't know that anyone else does it, but I mean, like, we should make We're other teams in. do it. Yeah, because Montwood are winning, and I back them to win. We'll go ahead and turn to District 15A Division 2. Ganathio clinched the district title last night with the win over El Paso. 
There was a battle for the second seed in the district between the Chapin Huskies and the Andrews Eagles. The winner will get to host the playoff game next week. The loser will have to hit the road. Sam, you're out of there. Yeah, it was also a battle up for Northeast bragging rights. Andrews having some fun thanking their seniors for senior night. But it would be the Huskies rolling on into town to take on those Golden Eagles. And I got to say, guys, the Eagles, they came out soaring. This is the opening kickoff. And Andrus is going to take it all the way to the eight yard line. I get it because it's Eagle Solos. Yeah, do fly. makes sense. That yeah. is very uh -huh. cool. And then just a couple of plays later, Marcus Wilson is going to get the handoff at the four yard line, get over, and that would be seven to nothing Eagles. Now, this is Chapin would go three and out on their next drive. This is fourth and nine. And Jaden Urbina, the quarterback, throws a prayer on fourth down, and Eric Luther answers. Touchdown, Eagles. It is 14 to nothing. The Eagles have all the momentum. But who does Chapin call upon? No other than Davion Singleton, who's going to get this is fourth down as well. So trading fourth down touchdowns, he's going to hit that B button, hit a nasty spin move. And it would be all Huskies from their final one in this one, 49-21. There actually was a delay in this game because concern over some noises coming from the bleachers, but those were just fireworks, which we learned later. Well, staying in a 5A Division 2, the Jefferson Silver Foxes looking to cause an upset against Burgess and some ruckus in the district, but down 14-6 to six here, and the Mustangs extended out to 21-6 to six of a Luke Dexter Quinn run at this point. The Mustang cheerleaders are just straight up chilling after okay. that, but uh, Silver Foxes are still taking it to the Mustangs. Watch this move from QB. Jesus Gomez takes it to the corner and then just the stop. Turn back, pick up a couple more yards, but in the end, Mustangs just too big, too strong in this one. Burgess win 28 to six, and Bernie Luna in his first year as head coach takes the Mustangs back to the playoffs. Let's go ahead and, uh, yeah, you see it coming up right here. Zach Stamps Blitz. Take it over to young Zach over at the sack last night. Stand with sponsor by Drake Like Nikos and Drake Like Infinity. Let's at the sack line. Fire. Zach's got some speed there. I'm really <laughs> curious if Zach outran the back handsprings. Yeah, uh, he looks like he's yeah. going pretty fast, but he also has some energy. The, uh, the punch to his own face. I hope he's okay. It We've all been yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, okay, coming up after the break, we're going to have the winner of this week's Blitz pick and uh, we're also checking on some more games in, in the, the District 1-4A Division 2 between Pecos and Mountain View, whereas in Class 2A, uh, Anthony played host to Ozona. That's coming up after the break. Zach's Dance Blitz, a high school mascot dance-off. Every Friday night during the Borderland Blitz at 10.35 p.m. Sponsored by Charlie Clark Nissan Infinity. Sometimes, it's as if the universe wants everything to work out. Like getting a new or used car with no payments for 90 days. When the planets align, it's the right time. Get pre approved for a GECU auto loan now. What does Habitat for Humanity build? Opportunity, strength, and stability. Home. Hey, everybody, I'm Garth Brooks. And I'm Trisha Yearwood. And nothing illustrates the beauty of what we can build together like Habitat for Humanity. In our work with Habitat, we've seen what's possible. In your community and around the world right now, neighbors are helping neighbors build masterpieces of their own. Visit Habitat.org to learn more and get involved today. 93.1 Kiss FM, today's best mix. Where Mike and Iris starts your day. Open the 93.1 Kiss FM mobile app. 
Well, turning to District 14A Division 2, there was one playoff spot available. It would either go to the Clint Lions or the Mountain View Lobos. Now, Clint could get in with a win against Monahans, but that, would, that was going to be a tall order because the Monahan Lobos are the district champions. They're undefeated this season, and you see right there, they handled the Lions easily tonight. 40 to nail as Monahans finishes the regular season undefeated 10-0, and they'll be the number one seed. But all was not lost for the Lions because they could still get into the playoffs if Mountain View lost their game against Pecos. Mountain View needed to win to clinch the last playoff spot. The Lobos came out firing by blocking a field goal. Then Eric Dominguez keeps the big plays coming. He comes up with the INT on Pecos Oma Sogado. The defense keeping them in it, but the ball turned over and Johnny Morales from Pecos would make them pay the handoff and yeah he is in for the score staying on his feet the Lobos come out on the losing end 35 to 27 so Clint is headed to the playoffs as the fourth seed in district one four eight division two meantime Fabens wrapped up their season at Fort Stockton you see Fabens falls 56 to 6 the Wildcats will end their season with a three and seven record as Fort Stockton finishes in second place in district one four eight D2 one final game from tonight and that was in class 2a the Anthony Wildcats looking to end their season with the win as they played host to the Lions from Ozona. First play of the game for Ozona's offense and uh, right off the bat they're going to find Paydirt Hudson Fowler to Dusty Smith. Ooh. I love that name Dusty Smith. As he'll take it to the house, Ozona goes up 8 to nothing after getting a two-point conversion. Then on their next drive, the handoff to Mr. Smith again and Dusty uh, going to show what he can do on the ground. He's not dusty at all. <laughs> not dusty, dusty at all. <laughs> you saw right there, he looked like he was going to cut it inside, but no, he stayed on the outside, uh, faked out the defender, picked up another six points for the Lions. They made it 15 to nothing. Finally, Anthony catches a break right here. They're punting the ball. Smith calls for the fair catch, but doesn't make it. So right through his arms, Anthony falls on top of it. They he got was a little dusty on that play. A little dusty on that play. The good field position here, Wildcats going to cash in. Angel Solis airs it out to Alex Parada, and he'll make the catch in the end zone. Touchdown, Wildcats. Unfortunately, Anthony falls in this one as Ozona gets the dub 29-13. to Anthony will end their season with a 3-6 and record. Let's go ahead and send it over to Sam for the winner of today's Blitz Pick. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start with a nice pick of Anthony because celebrating senior night, a lot of schools getting the home games, celebrating those seniors. Wanted to show up this next one because our very own Paul Sakala getting a oh. getting a look at him in the blitz picks. But then our winner this week is from Letty Portugal That's of nice. those Rangerettes Ranger. rocking. Yeah, good day for the Riverside Rangers, court district champs. Blitz pick winner. Yeah, a lot of wins. Congratulations there. Well, coming up after the break, we're going to go ahead and recap the scores for you. Take a look at who's headed to the playoffs and uh, who they're going to be playing in the by-district round, what we know so far. That's coming up after the break. Don't wait until 2024 and enroll now at Southwest University. Enroll by November 3rd to start your new career in the medical field today. Serve your community and enroll in nursing, sonography, or dental programs. We offer flexible schedules and short terms so you can finish faster. Develop your future and acquire the skills to succeed in the nursing, sonography, or dental fields. For more information, visit us at southwestuniversity.edu. Last day to enroll is November 3rd. Southwest University. Start today. Feet hurt. Foot ulcers and amputations are a major cause of morbidity, disability, as well as emotional and physical costs for people with diabetes. We believe that prompt diagnosis, early intervention, and prevention are essential to prevent or delay the onset of adverse outcomes. If you are diabetic, you should be seeing a podiatrist. Same day or next day appointments. Save yourself some steps. Book online today at thefootinstitute.com. For context, depth, and perspective you won't see anywhere else, tune into ABC7 Sunday Extra. How much backlash have you gotten for doing this? Join Saul Sides Sunday nights at 1035 as we bring you in depth debates on the borderland's most pressing matters. I'm going to repeat my question if you, if you yes. don't mind. Is there anything taxpayers can say or do to make you all change your mind? The big stories, impactful issues, tough, fair discussions, only on ABC7 Sunday Extra. Okay, let's get right to it and recap the scores from the final week of the high school football season here. Then we'll look at the, who's headed to the playoffs here. First off, Eastwood getting the win over Eastlake tonight. 
56 to 22 was the final on that one. America clinches the final playoff spot in District 16A, getting the win over Socorro 45 to 17, while Del Valle takes care of business against Bel Air to become district champs 42 to 17. Hanks clinches the last playoff spot in District 15A, Division 1, 35 to 19 over Isleta, while Parkland gets the win over Horizon 44 to 13, and Chapin winners over Andrus 49 to 21. To some other scores now, Burgess getting a win over Jefferson 20 to 6 to stay in the playoffs, Riverside getting a three-peat of the district title 66 34 over Bowie Austin over Irvin 23 13 Pecos knocking out Mountain View 35 27 Monahans over Clint 40 to 0 Fort Stockton winning against Fabens 56 to 6 and with some more scores Ozona over Anthony 29 13 Compass Academy blanking Dornillo 21 nothing Las Cruces with that big playoff win over Las Lunas Mayfield with that one point playoff victory over Gadsden 13 12 Coronado with a tight win over Montwood 26-21 and Franklin over El Dorado 48-40. And uh, the one final game from last night was a big, big one for Kenneth Theo. 62 to nothing over El Paso as with the win, the Eagles are your uh, outright district champs in District 15A Division 2. So let's go ahead and take a look at who's headed to the playoffs starting first in Class 6A. Yeah, in 6A we saw the Eastwood Troopers clinch uh, the playoff spot number one seed, 8-0 uh, in district play. They are heading to the playoffs and they will uh, be at home next Friday or oh, Thursday. We'll have to wait and see what day they're back at home. Pebble Hills also number two, six and two. They'll be at the sack against Odessa Permian. Montwood getting in there at five and three and America's also at five and three. Here's what we know so far though. Eastwood will host Friendship. That's what we know. And as far as Montwood and America's are going to have to hit the road. Montwood will hit the road to Midland to take on Legacy while America's will take on Midland High again on the road. And here we're looking at the uh, uh, District 5A, the uh, Division 1, Del Valle, Bel Air, and Parkland all headed to the playoffs. And uh, Del Valle will take on Amarillo Tascosa. They'll play host to the Tus to, to Tascosa, while Bel Air will also play host to Amarillo High. Parkland, Hanks, they're going to hit the road as Parkland will hit the road to Lubbock to take on Cooper. And Hanks hitting the road as well to take on the Abilene Eagles. Then in 5A Division 2, we saw Kennedy Eagles clinch the uh, number one spot with a 5-0 record. Chapin also in the playoffs, so both those teams will be at home uh, this coming week. Andrus and Burgess will hit the road for their playoff, but still making it to the playoffs. Yes, Canyon Theo will host Palo, Palo Duro this week, whereas Chapin will also play host to Abilene Cooper. Andrus going to hit the road to Wiley, and Burgess, as the fourth seed, will hit the road to a tough Wichita Falls rider next week. And in 4A, Riverside, as we mentioned, district champs for the third time. They will be at home for the playoffs as well as Austin, 3-1. And, uh, and then Bowie, 2-2, two and two, and St. Ellie, 1-3, also in the playoffs. I should say, in 4A, they all play neutral sites. So they, these are all going to go to neutral sites. All we know so far, this one is Austin will take on Andrews, and San Elizario will take on Brownwood. We're still looking to see who Riverside and uh, Bowie will pair up with, but those will be played at neutral sites. And then, of course, in uh, 4A Division 2, Clint also making Clint. the playoffs. So we'll obviously get all of the uh, the scores, yeah. not the scores, but who they're playing, where they're playing, and, and what time, and, and put it all on our website, kb.com, update this story for you so you can make sure you stay up to date on all of the action. And, of course, we'll have another Borderland Blitz, the final of yes. the season next week for that first round of the playoffs. Our playoff edition next week. 17 excited Texas schools here in El Paso County. How well, do you do that math like that? Four times time. four plus one. It's really, it's really easy. <laughs> well, did you count the Los Cruces schools? Got three I said Texas. Okay, all right, all right. They can as, roll the tape. As we saw, Las Cruces will take on Centennial in the quarterfinals, and Mayfield will take on Roswell in the, the quarterfinals. We'll mention that as well. There's going to be some tension in the City of the Crosses this week. There will be. The Centennial Las Cruces games, they're always fun to watch. So we'll, of course, have that for you next week in our playoff edition of the Borderland Blitz. For now, have a great night, everybody, and a great weekend. We'll see you next week.